Welcome to the 3030 Health Podcast. The following discussion is for education and entertainment. It is not intended to diagnose or treat disease. Please do not apply any of this information without first discussing it with your doctor. Here is your host, Dr. Ruiz. Hello, everyone. Super excited about today's show. My guest today is James Maskell. He is the creator of the Functional Forum, the world's largest integrative medicine conference. He lectures internationally and has been featured on TEDMED, HuffPost Live, TEDx, and many more. He also contributes to Huffington Post, Kevin MD, The Doctor Blog, and Mind Body Green. He serves on the faculty of George Washington University's Metabolic Medicine Institute. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Super excited to have James Maskell at my podcast. Hey, James, how are you, man? So glad to be here with you, Guillermo. Thanks for having me. Really excited to make it my debut on your podcast. We we met at Paleo FX, and and we just had some really cool conversations. And you know, you're friends with Dr. Paul Mitman, one of my mentors. Uh, you know, so like the stars aligned, and now we're here. Here we are. Yeah, glad to be here. I'm really excited. This is um, it's a big sort of moment for us, and uh, I'm glad to be able to capture it here. You know, James, to conserve tradition, uh, for all my listeners, what's your hero story? How did you come part of this health movement, and and what was you, where did you start? Yeah, so like I was the weird kid at school that did natural medicine from birth. Like I didn't really have a choice. My parents were super into it. I didn't realize that it was weird until I got to school and 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 no one knew what a chiropractor was, and certainly no one knew like wh why I went to a homeopath. And then um, my mom was the only mom in school that insisted that she be contacted before I was given antibiotics. And, you know, it was crazy to 25 years later. I mean, I will tell you, my mom has no medical training. Um, and and so 25 years later, I find myself as an investment banker in England and not really sure what I'm doing. And I had a kind of a moment of, of conscience where I just realized, like, there's this huge problem that's happening, chronic disease. I sort of had a, a feeling that, like, something in my childhood or something that I had learned growing up, which was, you know, totally different than the way that we were taught in school, but then ultimately started to come around. Like, I see, oh, antibiotic resistance. My mom was right 25 years ago. Like, there was just something in me that said, like, you need to pursue this. And so I left uh, England. I moved to America, and I've been here for the last 13 years, sort of, um, you know, really learning what was going on in the field of, of medicine and integrated medicine and then for the last four or five years have been building sort of uh the sort of the, the the roots or the foundations of something that i hope can be truly transformative for american healthcare and, and world healthcare. It, it's funny how how many entrepreneurs uh, are there in this health space and uh what why why do you think that that happens why do you think people that that had successful careers um, transition from a very successful career to a career in health? You know, I just, I felt compelled by it. Like I, I would not, I would not say that my career in investment banking was like highly successful. I did it for like a year. And for, as soon as I started doing it, I realized it was not cool, as cool as I thought it was going to be in any way. And, you know, I, I felt like I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and here was a a big problem that needed solving and just something that I felt like, you know, somehow by my weird childhood, I sort of had like a strategic advantage in the thinking process that most people who had never been to a naturopath, never been to a chiropractor, never thought about like eating organic or whatever. Those things were just forced upon me in the 80s. And I just sort of had this moment of thinking like either I'm just the weird background kid, or this is a strategic advantage in where I want to go as an entrepreneur. And when I chose to see it through those eyes, then, you know, everything changed. And then as soon as I arrive in, in America, I start working in a clinic. There's a naturopath working there. There's like doc, it's an integrative center. And I start seeing things that I've never seen before. Like I didn't even know were possible reversals of chronic disease, right? People getting better. Um, I started, I met these, you know, two mothers who had had kids who had completely, you know, lost their autism diagnosis. And suddenly I was like, okay, there's something to this. I don't know really what's going on. I was working in a clinic. I was seeing it happen. And that was like really the sort of, 
the rocket fuel that made me think, okay, there's something here and everyone needs access to this. How do we, how do we make that happen? And for my listeners, you know, they're familiar with what I do. You know, they're familiar, they're familiar with maybe naturopathic medicine, but what is functional medicine? How do you define functional uh, medicine? Because, you know, uh, a, a naturopath can be practicing in uh, naturopathic medicine and uh, it can be also uh, uh, in, it, within the functional medicine spectrum, but not all naturopaths practice functional medicine. So what's the difference? What's the difference between the current model and the model that you have been drumming and, you know, the pe people like Mark Hyman and Terry Walls and, you know, all these big names? So look, I think functional medicine, naturopathic medicine, integrative medicine all have more things in common than they have not uncommon, right? There's a lot of similarities and overlaps. The reason why I was attracted to functional medicine was twofold. One, because it had a consistent structure where every practitioner did it the same. And not just the doctor, but also like the ancillary providers, like the nutritionist or the health coach. There was kind of a structure where there was a common language. So, you know, to people to understand functional medicine, I see it as a new way of delivering care that has three major differences from traditional medicine. One, you always seek the root cause rather than treat the symptom. Two, the patient has to participate in the care. It's not the doctor with all the magic pills. It's the patient actually um, doing lifestyle differently. And third, you take more of a systems-based approach to the body. So you're not treating an individual you know, um, organ. Uh, you're treating the body as a whole. And those are the three things that I think sort of make up the, the basis of functional medicine. You know, certainly there's a lot of like the naturopathic community that have, you know, have taken to it. But then there's a lot of naturopathic doctors that are just treating patients with the same principles and getting the same results. As I said, the thing that really attracted me to functional medicine was just that there was a repeatable framework and a common language so that we could have you know, patients and doctors and other providers all speak the same language. Because I think one of the biggest things that I see in medicine is just communication is not very good. And so this was um, some strategic advantages to build, you know, a, a system of the future. You know, the allopathic medical model gets uh, gets beaten up a lot. And, and it's not because our friends in the conventional medical model are uh, are not smart or they don't know what they're doing is that the system that they're pl uh, plugged into is broken. You know, they would love to spend an hour with their patients. They would love to be motivational. They would love to change lifestyle and, and diet. They would love to do all the things that, that I get to do as a naturopath and, uh, you know, practitioner of, fun of functional medicine, but the system is broken. And it's so frustrating when you hear stories of people uh, with misdiagnosis or uh, given, you know, uh, medications that, that counteract or have deleterious effects for them because they couldn't spend the time with the doctor that they should. How do we fix this? Yeah, look, there's, there's, uh, that's, that's the big question. That's what I've been asking myself for a, for a long time. So my first plan, like, on, on fixing it is we need way more practitioners and doctors trained in this kind of care. Now, naturopathic medicine is awesome, but there's only a few thousand naturopaths and there's not enough to be able to solve what is a worldwide, countrywide problem. And so for the last four years, we've been trying to get regular doctors, you know, primary care, family medicine, um, you know, uh, internal medicine, specialists, to practice functional medicine. That's been our goal. So we did that through basically taking a lot of education that was typically um, you know, expensive and at hotels and you had to fly to and making some of it free online, creating communities of practitioners all across the country, just making a safe space in every city where practitioners and doctors who were doing this type of care could get together and share their experience. What we found is that doctors were a lot more confident to make the transition to practicing functional medicine if they could see other doctors doing it. That was all they needed. Like, and if they lived in a place where there was a lot of them and they were all part of a community, that community grew really quickly. So that was the first step in our plan is we had to spoil the numbers. The second phase in the plan, you can see doesn't really work very well unless you have a world, you know, a nationwide um, network of these providers. 
So then the second step is start to think about how do we make it accessible? Because, you know, ultimately there's this illusion that functional medicine is expensive. And that illusion comes from the fact that it's not covered by insurance, right? You know, this illusion is created because the things that you do in traditional medicine are way more expensive, like autoimmune drugs, $5,000 a month, right? You know, uh, surgeries, uh, all kinds of medication, like these medications are very expensive, but because they're covered in the plan and because you don't really know what anything costs in the healthcare system, you pretty much just feel like anything that you have to pay for outside of your traditional insurance plan is is expensive because you're 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 paying the full price and you're paying for it directly. And so we st we start to have to think, okay, could we find ways to get this, you know, covered by insurance? But then if you've learned anything from the naturopathic profession, is that like that's a double-edged sword too, because now by taking insurance. You know, the insurance companies dictate the care. It's actually not that easy for a practitioner to run an insurance based practice doing functional and naturopathic medicine because it takes more time. You have to listen for longer. And so there's a lot more, you know, there, there's there's just more that has to be done in order to to execute it. So we looked out and we, you know, we've heard from thousands of thousands of doctors and like ameliorated the plan. And so about about a, about three years ago, I stumbled across a very, very interesting world just by happenstance that gave me a clue into what I thought might be a solution. And um, for the, some of your listeners may understand, if you live in America, you may have heard of it. But if you're outside of America, you probably have not heard of it. But in America today, a million people, a million people in America do not have health insurance, but use a thing called a Christian health cost sharing ministry. It's a it's a it's a completely unique American phenomenon and it's grown like eight X, eight times as many people use it today as 2010 because they these Christian ministries, there were five of them were given an exemption to the law that you didn't have to have health insurance. If you're part of a member of one of these groups, you didn't have to have health insurance. So people flock to it. Why? Because it's way cheaper. Right. It's way cheaper because everyone in the community, there's an agreement of how they take care of each other. They all live by certain, in this case, Christian principles that teach them that they have to keep themselves healthy. And three, they take advantage of something that's really growing in medicine right now, which is the cash economy. Right. There's this whole separate world in medicine of a cash economy where doctors pay, get paid cash patients pay cash. And actually, the cash economy is better for both patients and doctors, right? Because patients get the lowest rate, way lower than the insurance rate that if you just give your card, you get billed an astronomical rate that no one ever sees and it's all opaque and no one knows what's going on. And the doctors prefer cash too, because waiting three months, six months to get paid by the insurance company at a super low rate doesn't help anyone either. So what I started to realize is the only people that benefit from the insurance system is everyone apart from the people that matter. Yeah. Right? The, well, it's the people it's the making the policies. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, so as I started to really understand this, I thought if only there were a, if only we could make our own Christian health cost sharing ministry where it would be, you know, totally available to anyone who just cared about wellness. And up until January 2018, that was not a possibility because there were only five of these groups. They were given a special dispensation within the ACA and that if you had one of them, you didn't have to pay the tax penalty. And then on January 2nd, the tax penalty went away. And I felt like this was our moment where we could create, as Bucky Fuller says, which is my favorite quote and it's been on the bottom of my email for the last five years, is we you don't you know, he says you don't create change by fighting the existing reality to create change you build the new system that makes the existing system obsolete and i think that in naturopathic medicine and in functional medicine it is it is no more there's no more clear obvious example in the world today that if you work with people to prevent 
and reverse their chronic condition, you you reduce the need for the rest of the medical system that's just managing the disease once it's there. And that is the potential of what we can do. And I'm excited to say that later this year in November, in time for open enrollment, we'll be launching the first alternative to health insurance that is built on the chassis of cost sharing. It's built on the chassis of no one ever paying full price for medicine and people being in agreement and taking care of each other's costs in time of emergency. And it's going to be so much cheaper than insurance that you can then use the money that you save to visit whatever practitioner you want. And that practitioner will love you because you'll pay them cash. <laughs> you know, let's dig deep into this. There was a lot of you know, stuff to chew there, uh, James. So let's start at, you know, at... The problem with insurance and, and the system of like, you know, uh, the hidden economy. I'm going to give you an example of what happened just this past week, okay? I prescribed for a, for a medication and uh, my patient was like, you know, uh, can you sub – let's submit it through insurance. Now, we're a cash-based practice in Arizona. I can submit my my prescription and if the insurance decides to cover it, they, they can cover it, you know? So I uh, send, send the prescription, you know, through my fancy uh, medical records. The pharmacy gets it. I get a prior authorization. What is a prior authorization? It's someone in a suit somewhere in a building with no medical experience asking me, why are you prescribing this? Okay. And that just makes makes me mad at the core because I'm the doctor here. So I I start answering all these questions and like I'm just getting so upset because like I'm wasting my doctor time, you know, answering all these questions. So I went and looked at the price, at the cash price for this medication. That that cash price for that medication was like twelve dollars. Now, imagine if that person goes to that pharmacy and automatically, because we are trained to do this, you give your your uh, your insurance card, and then the copay is twenty dollars for a thirteen dollar medication. So it would be cheaper for that person to avoid all this hassle and just pay cash for that medication. But because that insurance company is trying to save cost in a weird way. They are putting all this uh, all these barriers for me not to prescribe that when even the cost of the copay is more expensive than the actual cash price of the medication. No, but what price like that they're charging to insurance? Like you're paying it up, right? They're paying like a hundred dollars, right, for it because they because the pharmacy the pharmacy has to say, okay, I'm going to price this for insurance price at a hundred dollars because I need to recover those thirteen. And the insurance company is probably going to uh, just try to shortchange me. So the so the insurance company says, "Oh no, I'm not going to pay a hundred. I'm going to pay 20. <laughs> and then you know, it, so we can avoid all of this if we actually knew the price of what we are buying. Here's the thing. So if you listen to the politics, you, know, you listen to Washington talking about healthcare. The only conversation is coverage. Oh, is everyone going to be covered? You know, and that's the conversation. But the real conversation for every person who's actually dealing with healthcare, covered or not, is cost. It costs way too much. You're in Arizona, dude. The price of uh, health insurance in Arizona went up over 100% last year. So 100% in one year. So like we're at a moment where we have to find a way to reduce costs. And when I look at the price of a drug and you see cash at the bottom and then all of these gradations going up, in some cases, like 20 times the cash price and more for pharma. In lab testing, right, this is something people don't know, but in 47 states, you don't need to go through your doctor for lab testing and you could just go directly to the labs. And in some cases, you can save like, you know, 85, 90% on the, on the labs. And it's the same thing all the way through the economy. And so... You know, my thesis is we have to build something around the low cost and build structure. And it just so happens that these Christian ministries have been doing this sort of like in a very 
um, under, you know, sort of like a hidden way for a long time. But what that means is there's this incredible capacity in the industry to reduce claims. Like they reduce claims on average by 60% by arguing for the cash rates and having lawyers and a whole team that like fight for you to get the, you know, the costs reduced. So ultimately I realized like playing the insurance game was going to be a losing proposition, playing inside someone else's ecosystem. And so, you know, this new health ecosystem, I think is going to be great for doctors. It's going to be great for all other practitioners and most of all, it's going to be great for patients. And I think that, you know, we've been forced to buy one of these commercial insurance products for the last eight years. And 7% of people trust their health insurance. 7%. Right? <laughs> so what an incredible opportunity to just, you know, to just do something totally different and radical. And that's what we're going to try and do later this year. And it's built on top of the work of doctors like you who've been proving the outcomes of reversing chronic disease in practice all across the country. And I think that perhaps the biggest opportunity is that that the, the current health organizations failed to see what was right in front of them which is that this medicine delivers better outcomes at lower cost because you start with the least costly, least, interve least invasive interventions first and you work up. That's a naturopathic principle. That's the therapeutic order. That is an idea whose time has come, you know, fiscally and clinically. You know, it, it, it's so funny that you say uh, how, how, you know, you're like – peppering all of this naturopathic philosophy. It's it's pretty amazing and it makes me really happy that you're so aware of this because in reality, I don't have time to go uh, negotiate with insurance companies my rate and then having to uh, fill out you know claim forms and things like that. So how does this insurance, okay, translate into cash for the practitioner? So what we're launching is not insurance. It's an alternative to insurance. It's a health cost sharing community. And that's that's just one thing to know. Uh, it operates in ex almost exactly the same way. You pay a certain amount every month. It's called an, un uh, that's a share amount. You have a certain amount that's not shared that's equivalent to the deductible. So it's like very, very similar for people. But yeah, ultimately, you know, you have a certain amount that, that's covered there. But instead of you going to you and saying like, here's my insurance card, you can go to any doctor and you just say, so I'm coming to you and I say, hey, uh, Dr. Ruiz, I'd like you to be my doctor. I'm going to pay you cash and then I'm going to submit my claim for reimbursement. So essentially they pay you at a point of service and then they submit it. And if it's included in the rules of the, the tour, like in that situation that I mentioned, your charge is $300. I submit the claim and my claim gets paid because, you know, you're a licensed provider doing what you do. And ultimately, you know, that $300 goes towards my unshared amount, which is like the deductible. Ultimately, I've been part of one of these Christian ministries for the last five years. I got it when I had a daughter. I didn't have health insurance before then. And it's been great. And, you know, it's it's a different it's a slightly different thinking process. But you know what? We're ready for a different thinking process in medicine, like the thinking process of my insurance will cover it. Let's just put as many charges as possible on there. That's kind of what got us into this mess. We need to have a sense of community responsibility for our healthcare dollars. And this structure actually facilitates that kind of thinking in people's minds. Now, what's the difference between the model that you that you guys are using and a health savings account and an HSA? Yeah, like health savings account. You know, you just have to have, you know, let's say you could save $5,000 into a health savings account and you could not have insurance today. That's a possibility. But if you get into a car wreck and your health cost costs $200,000, your health savings isn't doing anything. It's only covering the first five. In this plan, you know, we have we cover costs associated with accidents. That's the number one thing that, you know, what do you really want from insurance? You want someone to take care of you in the case of emergency. And the rest of the time, you take care of yourself, right? That's the that's the overriding thesis. So in my model, if, you, if you're if you part of our thing, you, you know, you pay every month. And if you're unluckily in a situation where you find yourself with a larger health cost over $500, you call into the company straight away. And we essentially have someone on our team who's going to call ahead to the hospital, negotiate the rates, get the lowest cash rate from the hospital and pay them directly and you don't even have to touch anything. 
just think if I if I have a team on my hand, if I if I pay that person, let's say thirty dollars an hour, and they go they call the hospital and they take a two hundred thousand dollar bill down to thirty thousand dollars, which is definitely possible. Those kind of numbers are real straight out of it. I know it sounds insane because this is seven times differential, but that's the scam, my friend. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. So, you know, in that moment, that person just saved the community one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, probably in a couple of hours cost me $60 to pay that person. We're going to do that all day, every day. And I'm going to have an army of those people, as many as I need, to go for every claim and reduce it down so that the community takes advantage. And we're going to share those, we're going to share those ideas. You know, we're going to share those wins with the community so everyone knows the great work that's happening on their behalf. Because ultimately, everyone in the community is responsible for their own like slice of the community pot. But by using those kind of strategies and seeing this 30 year history of success with the ministries, we're going to see that these ne- these R amounts are going to stay low and possibly even get lower. So my vision is we're going to launch it this year. But next year in 2019, when everyone gets their next rate saying, oh, your health care rates are going up. I want to be able to say our health care rates are going down. Because people took care of each other because people took responsibility for their health. When issues came up, we had a ninja team to go and, you know, go after all these bills. And that doctors in our network were super happy, too, because they were seeing like excited, inspired people who were ready to pay cash at their door and save all of the problems of the insurance mess. It, you know, it, it is so awesome. And it's so inspiring you know because it's possible and and how does a two hundred thousand dollar bill get reduced to thirty thousand dollar again it's because the people uh managing those charges you know they they inflate the prices of like your iv catheter your bag for the iv your uh bedding they charge you for all those things and and they charge you you know what is it twenty dollars for an aspirin by having someone that's like okay you can go and fight an insurance company for you know a couple of hours a day to try to negotiate this price, or I can pay you cash right now. The hospital is going to be like, sure. <laughs> When I came into naturopathic medicine, I knew that I was going to be in a cash-based practice because I want to dictate the way that I practice, okay? I never thought of the possibility of there being a And I don't want to call you an insurance company, an insurance company that could work with me on my terms. And this is exactly what you're designing. Yeah, look, I mean, look, I've been in the field for 13 years listening to doctors like you. And so there's no way that I'm going to make something that like that doesn't include them because I want you guys on the front lines in my system because I can show. And, and really, it's not my system. It's our system. Like ultimately, I want this to be a model for how we do healthcare around the world because every single person, every country's got chronic disease issues. And ultimately, you know, chronic disease comes down to lifestyle and behavior. We're going to create communities of healthy people all across the country who support each other to keep the, each other's costs down. So, yeah, look, we I just been taking notice of what I've seen over the last 13 years. And the Christian ministry definitely look. You've got this whole world called the sharing economy, right? Everyone knows Airbnb, Uber. If I told you 20 years ago that you're going to let some guy you'd never met sleep on your sofa for 50 bucks a night, you're like, that is never happening. If I tell you you're going to get into some guy's car and he's going to give you a ride and he's not a licensed taxi driver, you're not getting in that car. But today you do both of those without thinking because we trust the sharing economy. I want to turn health cost sharing from this weird niche things that Christians do to just the way that people take care of each other, the new way that it happens. And in this new way, we're going to put two new layers of care between you and the rest of the system to keep you out of the system. One is comprehensive health coaching. So helping people execute on healthy behaviors. And two is this sort of functional medicine, primary care layer, where functional medicine, naturopathic medicine, integrated medicine, holistic medicine, physicians can come up with root cause resolution plans, mainly for those people who have chronic diseases that have been driven by lifestyle and who can be resolved with lifestyle. And that is by far where the majority of health costs comes from. So we're going to have a very low priced offer for someone like yourself, 
Uh, if you're single and under 40, uh, an individual person, the prices are going to start at 139 a month. And then you'll be able to, you know, the prices go up if you have a family and obviously depending on your like unshared amount, but it's going to be super cost um, effective. And then by by making it that cheap, we're going to incentivize all the people who are now at one point like chronically ill to want to get in there by getting themselves well with a practitioner like you. Hey, how much does it cost for a person to be healthy uh, a year? Uh, you know, quick napkin math. So 139 times 12, you know, you're talking about, you know, around 1500. How much does it cost, okay, for a person to be healthy? The answer is zero because, you know, as long as you have the diet and all of that squared away, you should be taken uh, care of. The problem is that in the United States, a catastrophic injury can put you, can make you bankrupt, okay? So this is peace of mind and this is uh, something that's going to help you get biomarkers of health and be able to take care of yourself and be even healthier. But how do we convince people to be proactive in their health? And how do we convince people to eat better and sleep more and reduce their stress and change this mentality around the world? So there's three C's that I think can do this, and I'm going to just share these with you. So the first is content, right? People have to know what to do. If you've listened to this podcast, you probably know exactly what to do. And if not, just go back and listen to all the rest <laughs> of it, right? If people need to know what to do. There's enough content out there. If content was enough to change everything, then we wouldn't need anything else. But like it's not. So content is the first one. We have to have the right content. I think what we're starting to see is just like, really clear ways in which chronic disease can be reversed. We see how important blood sugar is. We see how important eating real food is. We see the importance of stress and sleep and exercise, right? So this is like the fundamentals. People kind of know what to do. The second C is community, right? Community is the most powerful force in health creation. It helps people be accountable to the content and the goals that they have. And so we're going to radically transform you know if, if if i've done nothing else in my career it's to build community we got 500 communities of doctors and practitioners around the world like i just have that's just the weird world that i grew up in and what i've been able to bring we're gonna have an incredible community so inside of it you've got like book clubs where we can learn from the top teachers we've got an online portal you know there's going to be regular meetups all around the country cooking community cooking that kind of stuff so like all of that is definitely um community is happening we can support it and then the third c is coaching right giving people telling people what to do has not really proven a great strategy for changing behavior even if the things that you're telling them to do are way smarter than the guy down the road We need to be able to coach people to actually learn and develop new skills and to participate. And so we're putting three new layers into healthcare, content, community and coaching uh, on top of like the clinical layer, right, that you that you deliver. And we think that with one those three layers, we'll be able to get to everyone and to be able to do it at a reasonable cost. Now, some people will come along quickly, people who are already committed to personal responsibility for their health, your podcast listeners, you know, they'll be the first through the door because ultimately they've been overinsured in the current system because they're not going to get type 2 diabetes if they follow your diet. They're not going to get heart disease. They're not going to get they're going their chance of getting an autoimmune disease goes down dramatically. And so those people will love the low cost to be able to take care of it. Other people will take longer, but you know what? When one person in a community starts to have incredible return to health, it inspires a whole community. And so we want to see it like farmer's markets, just spread out like a weed all across America. I, I think you just nailed it in the head when you said that people have been overinsured. And the crazy thing is this. It's like we are overinsured and spending so much money for a service that we, A, don't know how to utilize. And B, is just expensive to even utilize. You know, this $5,000 deductible that we are, have been accustomed to, you know, for someone that's in within, you know, this ancestral or paleo or functional medicine, you know, usually you go, you up for like a high deductible. So everything that you, that you, um, that you do before those $5,000 comes straight out of your pocket and you're still paying every month 
for uh, for this high deductible type of insurance that no one knows how to navigate that, you know, like for the past couple of years, all of the labs that I've been getting, you know, just to check my biomarkers have come out of pocket. And it's just easier just to pay it and not, uh, you know, not submit the uh, the claims to the insurance to, you know, chip away at that five uh, that five thousand dollar deductible. I am overpaying for my insurance. I am overinsured and I am not getting anything out of it. Absolutely, dude. That's, and you're the, you're the average person. That's everyone. That's everyone. So like, you know, there's so much that they could be doing. Like why, why hasn't an insurance company ever come out with any sort of training on how to keep yourself healthy, right? You've had 30 years to learn how to do it. You've never done it. It's because the incentives are actually way more perverse than you think. And they actually want costs to keep going up. It's like, it's just when you start really getting into what insurance looks like and how they get paid. And so look, here's the opportunity. And this is why I'm excited. They've been so bad, right? That it's just, there's never really been in the last eight years, there's been no opportunity to like go head to head with them because the, of uh, the ACA law forced you to have to buy one of their products. That was the law. The law has changed. And so we have a window now where we can establish this kind of care as the new standard of care and and to be able to showcase the incredible power of functional naturopathic medicine to control costs by keeping people well. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to showcase that it works. And then, you know, as as where it goes from there, who knows? But ultimately, you know, the thing about this that I like and the reason why this is a plan for me, whereas everything else that we've done through employers and whatever has been, you know, kind of cool and interesting, but this is where the rubber hits the road. We don't need to ask anyone's permission to execute this plan. We can just do it. And, you know, and the world will change as a result. And so if you're listening to this and, you know, you've been listening to these podcasts all these years, come November 1st, for the first time when open enrollment starts, you're going to have a new health option. And my encouragement is that you not only join us, but come and see us because I'm going to be traveling around the country for the next four months. And I'd love to meet you in person. You know, you're a madman, you know, uh, because I, I bet I bet when you woke up, uh, I, I can't imagine, you know, you woke up one day and then you turn to your wife and it's like, you know, I'm going to disrupt the system. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it it's insane because the, the, the solution is like it's like the nose, in, you know, in, in, the, in front of our face. You know, it's like the solution is right there. You know, how can we merge this cash system? And uh, and incorporate it into this world of health. Now, for the people out there that think this this type of health, you know, I, at one thirty nine, uh, you know, a month, you know, I, I'm, I'm I've answered my own question. But for the people out there that that say this is elitist uh, medicine or this is uh, this this medicine cannot be uh, sustained at a low cost, are there any examples of? practitioners out there that are using this type of system in a community based where it's not elitist and people have access to it and it's actually saving cash. Yeah. So like one thing I like to look at is direct primary care as a model. So like direct primary care is a, is a reflection of just exactly all the things that you talked about in your practice, wanting to pay cash, you know, wanting to get cash as a doctor. So I see practices right now that run at 60 you know, sometimes $80 a month where you get a direct primary care physician. So a physician will say, okay, I'm only taking a thousand members, you know, or 500. It's going to be 80 bucks a month. And this is going to be how I'm going to run my practice. And they don't have nearly as many staff. You get the time that you want with a doctor. And, you know, that's a, the, the direct primary care movement is happening and has happened. And it, it's kind of connected with functional medicine, but not quite. But there's thousands and thousands of doctors that are leaving insurance and doing this and, and making actually really reasonable rates to be able to do that. The problem is it's also happening outside of insurance. So you have to pay that extra on top of what you get through insurance to have more time with your with your doctor. But that's, you know, you know, that's that's one example. The thing is, 
this hasn't been, you know, a lot of, and then a lot of those um, direct primary care people have said, hey, if you can get a Christian ministry because it's way cre cheaper and then the money you're saving you can use on me and then you've got the best of both worlds. You know, help, you know, you, you've got help in case you get hit by a car and then you've also got a doctor that you can spend time with that you're paying directly that you have a great relationship with. And so, you know, that's that's an example that I see. I mean, ultimately, look, this thing is not going to be a fit for people on Medicare because Medicare is free. Right. Yeah. You know, so like I can't really compete with free. But at the same time, there's many, many people. I'm making this for young people. You know, I want people when they see it, when they experience it to go, this is just the way that it should be. People taking care of each other and also people, you know, helping each other stay well. And so that's, you know, that's that's the energy that I want to put out into the world with this with this uh, service. Medicare participants would bring more cost to the system. As you go older, you, your morbidity rates go up. So now we would have to spend more money on them in comparison to someone that is, you know, 30 something years old, eating a, a good diet, you know, either paleo, keto or whatever, exercising. So that's why we don't want people that, that have a lot of uh, morbidity into this system because we want the healthiest people so we can save that money. 100%. Yeah. I mean, look, that's what I'm trying to do this summer is recruit, you know, from healthy populations into our initial pool. And, you know, that's the plan. And it's going to be a fun ride. And so basically between now um, and the rest of the year, I'm going to be on tour until November 1st. So I'm going to go around the country. I'm going to be coming to um, to to Phoenix, going city to city to get the doctors on board, get them all signed up and get them set up for the plan. The final event on the tour is L.A. on November 1st, and that's going to be the day of open enrollment. We're going to do a big nationwide event around that and try and get. You know, try and get an initial at least 10,000, maybe 20,000, maybe 50,000 people into our into our community and then spend the next three years proving out that this type of care keeps people better and that we can save a dramatic amount of cost by putting this kind of care as the new primary care. So, Guy, can you talk a little bit about the tour? Uh, that's super exciting. Another, you know, another morning you woke up, you looked at, at your wife and you said, I'm going to be on a bus for four months. <laughs> I can't believe you're still married, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Man, my wife is amazing. And I'm super happy. No, it's exciting. So, it kind of started last year where the first time I got in an RV with my five-year-old and she was like, why don't we just live in this? <laughs> so that was like the genesis of it last summer. And so we started planning it and then it got, you know, whatever. So, yeah, 22 cities. We're starting June 25th in San Francisco. Um, in the July and August, we're going to be sort of in the middle of the country in the West Coast. Uh, September, we're going to be in the Midwest and the Northeast. And then October, coming back through the South, Texas and through Phoenix, um, where uh, you're going to be participating in the event. That's the 29th of October. If you go to... Go Evo Med, G O E V O M E D dot com slash tour. Um, you can see all the tour dates. And um, thanks to our awesome sponsors, Genexa, which is the first uh, non GMO natural pharmaceutical company who have been our sponsor. We've actually got free tickets for anyone who listens to your show. So if you go to uh, any of the event brights and you put in tour code Genexa, G E N E X A with a capital G. If you put that promo code in, you can get free tickets for yourself and your family. Come down, see the tour, feel the energy, meet the local practitioners and find out all about the, uh, the service offering. And, the, you know, we're going to be sort of soft launching the product in September. And then in November is when you're going to be able to actually sign up. And then um, January 1st is when all this starts. That's that. That's fantastic. And, you know, uh, super excited about that. And it's going to just make the world smaller you know we have all this technology you know uh you're you're in california i'm in arizona uh, you know and we are uh we were watching the world cup in russia and all of this technology needs to be implemented into healthcare you know so we have telemedicine that that's going to connect people we have you know this uh direct access labs we have specialty labs that that are more specific and more sensitive Uh, for for people with chronic disease, and we have new ideas of what eating healthy is, 
And, you you know, if you're in Oklahoma, being able to see a practitioner in San Francisco or being able to see a practitioner elsewhere and receiving this information, uh, it uh, it's going to be just amazing. And this is just one other way that we are disrupting the system. You are connecting communities. There is a lot of thirst for this type of medicine. And unfortunately, because of uh, state boundaries or because of cost or because of all of these things, we are not able to access it. But thanks to technology, thanks to uh, advances in communication, we are able to spread this content. So thank you so much for all you do. I, I'm super excited about this and I can't wait to see, you know, in, 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 a, in a couple of months how you've disrupted the system and, and created true change into this healthcare. Let's do it. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, go to newhealth.com. It's new with a K, so K-N-E-W health.com. On there, you can sign up to stay on the loop, stay in the loop. Um, for those people who are in the loop around September, we'll be you know, opening up the opportunity for people to see the pricing and see the services that are included. And then November 1st, the big day, you know, I would love to fill the initial pool with paleo people, you know, CrossFitters, people who are ahead of the curve on keeping themselves healthy. If you're committed right now to personal responsibility, I think it's time for us to do an experiment in community responsibility. And I think that this is the leadership that this, that healthcare needs to be able to show where we're going in the future and it's going to take a team effort and I'm really thankful for the opportunity to be here with you Guillermo and thanks for all the great work that you've done in building this community and um, I think if we can bring all these communities together we can really do something transformational this year. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, James. And maybe, in, you know, maybe in uh, six months or something, you know, we will get you back and, uh, and, then, and then talk about, you know, how we are changing this system. Let's do it. Thanks awesome. so much for the time. Talk to you soon, man.